Next speaker, uh, Professor Alicia Emmons from the United States, and the title of her presentation is The Potential Role of Immune Therapy in the Pre-Metastatic Setting. Professor Emmons. Good afternoon, and thank you again for the opportunity to come back to Cairo and participate in this really terrific meeting. So I'm going to talk about the role of immunotherapy in the pre-metastatic setting, specifically the adjuvant and neoadjuvant settings. And I'll just preface this by saying this is very much an investigational area, um, with the exception of one disease type. These are my disclosures. So adjuvant immunotherapy is FDA approved in melanoma. There's no FDA approval for adjuvant immunotherapy in any other tumor type, solid tumor type, at least immune checkpoint. Um, Ipilimumab is approved at 10 mg per kg every three weeks for four doses, and then every 12 weeks for up to three years. In the pivotal trial that resulted in the approval, there was a median of four doses given. Nivolumab is used at 240 milligrams every two weeks for completely resected stage 3C or 4 melanoma for one year. These uh, data overall revealed a 35% reduction in the risk of death with adjuvant nivolumab as opposed to adjuvant ipilimumab with a hazard ratio of 0.65 and a p-value of 0 0.0001. So two approved agents for adjuvant immunotherapy and melanoma. No approved agent for neoadjuvant immunotherapy. These are the data that resulted in these approvals. So uh, Alex Egremont, uh, presented and published the data for the use of adjuvant IPI in stage three melanoma. And uh, this is a clinical trial that randomized patients to receive either single agent ipilimumab or placebo. And you can see that at 26 months, there was a 49% uh, relapse rate with ipilimumab relative to a 62% relapse rate with placebo. On the right is data from Jeff Weber, uh, looking at a comparison of nivolumab in ipilimumab in the adjuvant setting for stage three and stage four melanoma. The numbers actually between the Egremont trial and this data are pretty similar in terms of the IPI data. If you look at stage three on the top most part of the right-hand panel, you can see that the 12-month recurrence-free survival rate for Nevo was 72% relative to 62% with IPI. Um, and for placebo from the other trial, it was 56%. So you're going from 56 to 62 to 72%. And for stage four disease, uh, it was about 58% with IPI and 63% with NEVO. So NEVO clearly is an improvement, both with regard to clinical benefit as well as uh, toxicity. So this is a really interesting preclinical study that was published in Cancer Discovery in 2016. And it addressed the issue of whether it might be better to give immunotherapy in the adjuvant setting where there's only micrometastatic disease or in the neoadjuvant setting where you've still got a bulky tumor there. And the issue is there's a very big difference in the tumor load and the tumor antigens that are available to prime the immune response. And these investigators actually used a breast cancer model and they used two different tumor types. This shows a 4T1 triple negative breast cancer um, cell line. They used two different mouse models. They used a valve C that was genetically engineered so that the FOXP3 regulatory T cells could be deleted. And uh, they used wild type valve Cs where they used an anti CD25 monoclonal antibody to delete the regulatory T cells. So if you delete the suppressive regulatory T cells, um, you enable the development of effective anti tumor immunity. So they used two different mechanisms to do that. If you see, um, they injected either type of mouse with 4T1 cells and allowed the tumors to become established. They uh, gave the immunotherapy three days prior to surgery and resection of the tumor, and then they gave additional immunotherapy three days later. If you look uh, at the survival curves down below um, the experimental outlines, you can see that um, if you give the immunotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting, you get much better tumor-free survival, almost 100%, than if you give it in the adjuvant setting, as shown by the solid squares versus the solid triangles, relative to just buffer. So clearly, um, a genetic deletion of the Tregs is better in the neoadjuvant setting than in the adjuvant setting. Similarly, if you give anti-CD25 antibody in the neoadjuvant setting, you get better survival than if you give it in the adjuvant setting, relative to the buffer on the right-hand side. So two different ways of showing this. 
um, with a 4T1 model of triple negative breast cancer. This looks at a distinct uh, immunotherapy regimen which combines two different uh, monoclonal antibodies. One is uh, specific for PD-1, the other is specific for CD-137. Uh, and uh, in this case, the uh, animals which were challenged with either 4T1 triple negative breast cancer cells or this other tumor model uh, that's E771. At day 17, the animals were both uh, resected of their tumors as well as given either control or neoadjuvant chemotherapy with the two anti-PD-1, anti-CD37 antibodies. They got a second dose of the immunotherapy and then uh, additional uh, for those animals who uh, got it in the, adjuvant, or in the neoadjuvant setting, they got surgery uh, on day 21 and similarly on the right-hand side. If you look at the tumor-free survival curves, you can see that if you give the two antibodies in the neoadjuvant setting and the solid squares, you get much better survival than in the adjuvant uh, setting. And this is true on the right panel here as well. So that neoadjuvant immunotherapy improves survival relative to adjuvant immunotherapy in these mice. If you look on the right-hand side of the slide, they looked at tumor antigen-specific T cell responses. And you can see that in terms of the percentage of T cells, if you give uh, neoadjuvant therapy in the open squares, you get much greater numbers of the T cells than if you have adjuvant immunotherapy in the closed triangles. This is shown both in uh, the panel on the left as well as the panel on the right. And you get a persistent increase um, in these uh, T cells induced with neoadjuvant immunotherapy that persist for quite a long period of time. And this correlates with survival as shown in the lower part. So neoad neoadjuvant immunotherapy is better and it's associated with the induction of tumor antigen-specific T cells that persist over time and actually correlate with the survival. So what about in the clinic? Um, there has been one clinical trial, to my knowledge, reported in lung cancer that looked at the use of neoadjuvant NEVO, and there were um, two doses of the neoadjuvant nivolumab given with evidence of significant rate of major pathologic response. That was done by Patrick Ford at Hopkins. This is uh, data from Rita Nanda and is part of the ISPY2 trial. And this looks at the use of neoadjuvant PD-1 blockade with pembrolizumab and triple negative breast cancer. Uh, you've heard a lot about the ISPY uh, series of trials today. And this is a uh, component of the trial where patients were randomized to receive either standard paclitaxel in the neoadjuvant setting for 12 weeks or paclitaxel in combination with Pembro for 12 weeks. They then got uh, standard uh, AC chemotherapy for four cycles and then went on to uh, surgery. This is the side effect profile here, which is pretty typical of this class of agents with the exception that they saw a higher than expected rate of adrenal insufficiency for some reason, and it included both primary and secondary causes of adrenal insufficiency. They also saw um, both hypo and hypothyroidism. If you look across the different tumor types, so they grouped these uh, patients into those that were HER2 negative with any hormone receptor expression, and then they stratified by those that were hormone receptor negative or hormone receptor positive. You can see that for each of these groups, the probability that pembrolizumab plus paclitaxel was better than paclitaxel by itself was very highly significant. Uh, there was a series of studies then, then done by some other colleagues. This is data from Michael Campbell that was presented at San Antonio, uh, where he used uh, multiplex IHC to evaluate the tumor microenvironment at baseline, where there was a baseline tumor biopsy taken, and then at the time of surgery. They looked at CD3 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, CD68 positive macrophages, and its association with pathologic complete response. And there was absolutely no association by either total count of cells or by the location, whether they were intratumoral within the tumor cell nests or within the stroma. And you can see this on the right-hand part of the slide. They also did um, an analysis of the immune gene signatures uh, in these patients. And this slide just shows um, a picture of this immune uh, gene signature profile. And on the right-hand side, looks at the correlation of a CD3 gene signature uh, with CD3 T cell density, a CD8 T cell density with a CD8 T cell signature and a PDL1 staining with a PDL1 gene expression signature. And for those three um, biomarkers, the gene signature and the uh, IHC, 
result correlated very well. What did not correlate in this group of patients with, was the association of CD68 positive of macrophages with a macrophage signature. So pretty good correlation of immune gene signatures in terms of the T cell responses and uh, the pdl one expression. This is a summary of the association of immune cell uh, gene signatures with a pathologic complete response rate, and it looks at the three groups of patients, all HER2-negative patients. You can see that for pembrolizumab, uh, containing therapy, there was an association of PDL1, a T helper type 1 signature, B cells, and in particular dendritic cells for both the all HER2 negative group as well as for the hormone receptor negative HER2 negative group and to a somewhat lesser extent for the hormone receptor HER2 negative group. There was also a negative correlation with a mast cell signature um, in both the all HER2 negative groups and particularly in the hormone receptor positive HER2 negative group but not necessarily in the hormone receptor negative, HER2 negative group. A second biomarker response that was evaluated was um, those related to uh, DNA damage uh, and repair. And they based this off a uh, biomarker that they identified in the iSPY trial related to the use of voliparib, a PARP inhibitor, along with carboplatinum. And they defined uh, a signature of a DNA damage sensing pathway that was associated with that. So they evaluated nine gene expression signatures reflecting different aspects of DNA damage and repair in the neoadjuvant immunotherapy um, trial. And you can see that both um, a, a signature reflecting base excision repair pathway as BER or the DNA damage sensing pathway were associated with a complete pathologic response. Uh, when PEMBRO was present, but only the DNA damaging, um, damage sensing pathway was associated with pathologic complete response rate in the PEMBRO arm and not in the control arm. So that was highly specific uh, for those receiving the immunotherapy. So with regard to a summary of this ISPY2 trial, none of the immune cell types identified by multiflex um, immunohistochemistry were significantly associated with response particularly um, pathologic complete response to the combination of PEMBRO with chemotherapy. T cell gene signatures correlated with T cell infiltrates by multiplex IHC, but the macrophage signature did not correlate with CD68 positive macrophage infiltrates. Several immune cell gene signatures, PDL1 expression and DNA damage sensing pathways were associated with complete pathologic response to pembrolizumab based chemotherapy. And in particular, the T helper type 1 B cell and dendritic cell signatures were significantly associated with a complete pathologic response when adjusted uh, for the control arm as well as for hormone receptor status. And interestingly, and not a lot has been said about this, a mast cell signature was negatively associated with response, particularly in the hormone receptor positive subgroup. So a lot of room for further investigation in the neoadjuvant setting. Um, it looks like the, the presence of significant source of tumor antigen is important for uh, inducing the response, although the data in melanoma clearly suggests that there's a benefit to adjuvant immunotherapy as well. I'd really like to thank my colleagues for sharing their slides and data, and again, a special thanks to all the patients and families who participate in these trials. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Emmons, and because you are beyond schedule, so thank you very much. And we move to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Professor Mohsen Mukhtar. Professor Mohsen Mukhtar is a uh, professor of clinical oncology at Cairo University. He will give us a talk about the combination immunotherapy, rational, and outcomes. Professor Mohsen. 